So um, we just wanted to talk with you about this problem. I know this was something that you were passionate about when you mm -hmm. were the police chief. Yesterday, I had a chance to sit down with the police chief now, Chief um, Brian Dugan, and I asked, are you concerned that illicit activity could still be happening in these places? And he said, no doubt. I mean, let's be real about it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a handle or an idea of how big of a problem this is still today in Tampa? Mm -hmm. Well, we have, have put a great deal of effort into eliminating these locations that, you know, we have prostitution going on in, uh, uh, in our city. And we've worked for years to, to do this. But there are still a few of those places that exist and the police officers are doing everything that they can to stop this type of activity. And they are, and the chief talked to me about that. He mentioned how police officers, it's scheduled, they're mm -hmm. going in, they're right. checking licenses, they're checking IDs, but he said that, you know, from a law enforcement aspect, our hands are tied. He says it's frustrating, we don't have a lot of teeth when it comes to crime. Mm -hmm. What more? can be done here? Well, we've passed uh, on the state level the uh, licensing that all massage therapists have to have a license. So that's one tool. You know, you look at this as a toolbox and all of the different uh, ordinances and approaches that you can take. One would be from the preventive side, you know, to try to stop these individuals that um, seek out young women to bring them into prostitution, into the indentured slavery type activities. So we try to prevent that on the front end as law enforcement. And then we do everything we can with the tools in the box. If there are spot checks, uh, working with the health department, referring any, any violations to them, working with code enforcement uh, through the licensing bureau, and then with the officers doing the spot checks too. So it's not, there's not any one approach that will eliminate this, we have to come at it from as many angles as we possibly can to try to ensure that this type of activity doesn't occur in our city. How would you grade Tampa? How effective has Tampa been? I think Tampa's been very effective. You know, I worked on this very issue uh, back when I was a, a lieutenant in the Intelligence Bureau. And um, at that time, we, we really were out of control. We had way too many of the, the um, lingerie modeling shops, the massage, uh, you know, just that were really just fronts for prostitution. And so we have closed down the majority of those places, but it's still an issue that we have to address as a community. The chief told me that, you know, he's sometimes worried, he's concerned about some of the women working in these places. How concerned are you that they meet maybe being forced to do something. Yeah, I'm deal. very concerned about that. You know, we have gone in, in my, with my history as a police officer, we've gone into these places and fi found women that are literally living in these massage parlors and forced into to a life of prostitution. And that, as a community, is something we can't stand for. And that's why the police department, in cooperation with the health department, code enforcement, sheriff's office, are really trying to eliminate this kind of activity from our community. And they are. And mm -hmm. I know that the, the chief was so obviously concerned and so open and honest and transparent about how difficult this is. And I know there's like a handful of places, 17 places, mm -hmm. that they're periodically you know, going in. And he did talk about part of the difficulty is that businesses have rights as well. Right. So you can't trample on these rights. But is there anything that you can do because his hands are tied now and there's some of these businesses are still operating and they might have strange hours mm -hmm. or they might have windows that are dark and he even said you know when we're there for those 15 minutes nobody's coming in and out so right. it's just <clears throat> can you talk about what else you could do mm -hmm. could you set something up in the future is yeah. there anything else it sounds like you have made progress right. Is there anything else that can be done? Well, we're, you know, we're always looking at new ways to address any type of, of criminal activity because quite often the criminals are one step ahead and they know exactly what, in this particular circumstance, they know exactly what officers can and can't do when they try to come in in an undercover capacity. Right. And so we are always looking for new solutions 
you know, whether it's, it's the educational component with the officers to recognize this, um, new enforcement uh, ordinances or statutes that we can utilize. So what, what could we do? Yeah. Well, I think opening up to uh, inspection so that officers could walk through the entire building and see if there are individuals that are living there. You well, know, they're doing that, he said. Right, but they, they're not all the way through the, the location and the customers, you know, they have enough time from the front by the time we come, the officers come in to stop whatever activity is going on. Okay. So, the, you know, we are, are doing as much as we can and we are always paying attention to these types of crimes. And sometimes it's just the level of pressure. You know, the, the first, second, third, fourth check on these businesses uh, may not curtail the activity, but after a while, when the officers have been there 20 times, the customers will, you know, they'll say, well, I'm not gonna go to this location anymore, and that will put them out of business. So sometimes it's just outlasting the, the, um, the businesses and, and their ability to thwart any type of, of enforcement that the city can bring forth. So would that be an ordinance that allows you, or what, what would that look like that allows officers to have more access? Well, I don't know exactly what that looks like. I'm just saying that with our attorneys, with the city attorney's um, office and the police department, and even our state legislators and the health department, code enforcement, everybody coming together to see how we could address these types of businesses. We have gone after some of the, um, the new dancing locations from a financial standpoint as well. You know, that's even a tool. So nothing is off the table. The best approach would be prevention, you know, to try to stop women from getting into this type of activity in the first place. And we put a great deal of effort into those, into training officers to recognize, uh, you know, the signs of of individuals trying to lure young women into uh, prostitution, into human trafficking, and we do everything that we can to prevent that. But you know, they always have new ways of attracting young women. And you know, as a reporter who's trying to do you know stories that are important, stories that matter. I know that my predecessor, Mark Douglas, did a series of stories and. He was um, an important part of getting this bathhouse ordinance passed. And, um, you know, like you said, they're one step ahead mm -hmm. where um, only one place is still giving baths. The others, right. I talk with zoning, they're mm -hmm. not giving baths anymore. Right. So it's, they're just not doing that anymore. Right. And that I'm, is a great deal of progress. But again, you have to look at it from the, the lens of law enforcement that any individual that is engaging in these types of activity is one too many. So that's why the police department continues to work so hard to eliminate these places from our community. Right. Um, and I want to be as respectful as possible, but mm -hmm. can we have a concrete plan from you of the next step or what you can mm -hmm. do, talk with the attorney, or is there anything right. concrete you can do? Well, tell that's me? something that is, is ongoing all the time. And, and you know, the, the crafting of ordinances or statutes. Uh, those things don't happen overnight. We have to look out for individuals' uh, rights. And so I know that law enforcement is meeting on a, a regular basis with our city attorneys in contact with code enforcement, working hand in hand, and then uh, referring a lot of these violations to the health department too. But it's really gonna take a community effort to, to eradicate this kind of activity from our community. And we've made a great deal of progress there's still a ways to How go. How do you measure that progress? Just there's less of these Well, businesses? I measure that progress right by the, the reduction, the dramatic reduction in these types of businesses in our community. So should we just uh, check back in with you to see, you know, what what's mm -hmm. new, what's developed? Sure, yeah, that would be fine. You know, as and, and just in an ongoing, even having the community involved, you know, there, there are a number of individual citizens that are working along Kennedy Boulevard to get these types of, of uh, places, establishments out of their neighborhood to get them closed down. So it really is a community effort. As I said before, you've got law enforcement, code enforcement, uh, you have the health department, and then you have the citizens as well that are all working together to try to prevent these kinds of activities in our city. 
what about what if you passed an ordinance that you can't have dark windows and you mm -hmm. can't operate after 10 o'clock at night? Mm -hmm. Well, that, those would be questions for our city attorney. You know, is that um, within our realm, clearly we look at it in our realm of responsibility, but would that be violating the rights of these business owners? You know, you have to look at that through the lens of ensuring that whatever uh, processes, procedures, ordinances that we're putting in place to eradicate the problem aren't violations of constitutional rights. So those are the types of things that, that I think the chief was talking about when he said that um, he felt somewhat hamstrung in certain instances to address this problem. And finally, do you think when you're talking about this issue of human trafficking, like where is the biggest threat coming from in Tampa right now? Is it online? Is it the dance clubs? Is it these spas? Right. Or do you not know? Well, what I would have to say from my experience that it's a combination of, of areas. Online certainly is um, a problem, has been in the past, where predators will go in and try to find uh, vulnerable young women to get involved in these types of activities. Uh, you know, recruiting, girls that get involved and go back and recruit their friends to get in, involved as well. So there are a number of, of areas uh, that the predators look at to try to, to recruit or attract women into these types of activities. And it's something that the police department is aware of. And again, they have to stay on top of it and look at, we bring, we bring in new ordinances, new approaches, and then they try to find ways around that to circumvent the enforcement efforts. But trust me, the officers are working very hard to ensure that this type of activity does not occur in our community. And I don't doubt that at all for mm -hmm. a second. Um, the problem with the online is they'll advertise it, then they can set up quickly, mm -hmm. then they can also tear it down quickly. I mean, right. how do you get a handle on that? Mm -hmm. Well, the officers, again, have to, to ensure that they're monitoring those types of sites in real time, and then you know going after those predators. And we, we take it very seriously. And uh, you know, officers are working hard every day to, to stop this kind of activity. And final question with the Super Bowl coming, I know the chief said it's always a problem, it's an everyday problem, mm -hmm. but you know, there is gonna be a huge influx of right. people looking to mm -hmm. do right. whatever. Mm -hmm. How concerned are you about this threat rising during mm -hmm. the Super Bowl? Again, we're concerned about this every day, every hour of every day. But when we have these large events in, in the city of Tampa and in, in the Tampa Bay area, we're very fortunate to have large events. People want to come to our community for conferences, uh, conventions, large events like Super Bowl, WrestleMania. So when we have large influxes of individuals in our community, then you, know, you have to be cognizant of the fact that there may be more individuals, customers out there. And so those, you know, you just have that, that hyper-vigilant state of awareness during those large-scale events. And we'll have a lot more officers uh, in town during those large events, too. So we have assistance 